I want to thank everybody for being here this morning, and we'll look like we can have as good a day as possible. Let's let the uh, markets open and settle down for first. We've got a little bounce to start, and we're off and running. Okay, and I, like I'm looking at Nugget, JNUG, GDX, GDXJ, you know, some of the uh, miners are working. Nettie's just capped up to one fifty four, a dollar fifty four for Nettie's. All right, Footlocker trying to come off the map. Nuggets up 85 cents to $26. Yep. It's jumping the creek here, meaning that we're jumping over resistance level. a whole lot of good is it nugget spiked and then pulled back 15 minutes on the spiders capoche 238 basically give getting back or gaining back what we lost in the last hour of trading people didn't want to go home uh, I'm looking over here at the two-day highs only got a number that are at twos. I don't see fours and fives and sixes. I do see USAT. Let me uh, bring this up over the side. Nothing to write home about. Do, 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 do. Tandem TNDM eh, It's trying to Everything's going to be trying to come up off, off the bottom It's going to be tough Three and a half to four minutes into the market. You pros at the high of the day. Well, buying the high of the day, I'm, I'm a little bit late. To the party. Long from eighty seven. I'd have seen this a little earlier. 
to 15 minutes looking a little long in the tooth See if we go back and attack the $30 level again. I'm thinking that we could get up to 31. That's why I bought the stuff. Dow's up 300, 1.3%. UBXY is trying to come off the bottom, which would not bode well for my long position here. I'm going to go ahead and step aside and see if see if I can live to fight another day. cents a share probably got spooked we needed to let that candle finish Start taking notes here. Today is the 26th of December, which is Boxing Day in the UK. It's the second Christmas day. U Pro minus 0 0.1. Still can't get over 30 on a U-Pro, and Spider's having trouble with this level around 238, and a little long in the tooth on the, uh, so let's look at SPSX. The UBXY is going, but SPSX and U are not. Interesting. Well, there goes U Pro. It's over 30 now. Broke out. And our U Pro did a continuation pattern on the three minute. Got a wide range bar to open up for three. To Kind of a doji if you look at just the um, body of the candle and a follow through on the next uh, candle as well. I let myself get spooked out, but I wasn't going to uh, do what I did last week, which was uh, give it a lot of room 
for the uh, at the open and have it gap up, move up, and then crap out. So anyway, it is what it is. I lost ten cents a share. That's totally livable. What's getting me is the UVXY is rising while the inverse, the spider, is actually in rally mode. So this is weird. I don't know what to make of it. And when I don't know what to make of something, I try to stand down, to, you know, stand on the sidelines. There's the old Vicks going. VIX is trying to get up to the open, where it opened uh, UVXY, I mean, 8769. Waiting for a break out there. Very strange. There are a couple of things that could be happening, but I don't know. I mean, UVXY could, or the VXX could have been over, um, overbought over the week, uh, over the holiday period. So, um, so anything is possible. It was kind of unwinding itself. You pros in rally mode, I mean, uh, pullback mode, SPSX and rally. SPSX over 37-ish would be probably a decent long. Okay, I'm long some UVXY, 73, it's coming up off the bottom, looking for 88.55 and then 89.
Okay, I'm out uh, half at 8801. Move the stop up to break even. Actually, eighty seven fifty. Come on, baby, go. Stochastics on a uh, three is uh, pretty good. High wave doji, yeah, it's gonna, whichever way this goes, it's where it's gonna go. Okay. Do I see the spiders rallying from here? So, trying to anyway. Watching the spiders on a three minute there. If it rolls over, I'm good. Should get another spurt up here. There we go. And the spider's just kind of flattening out. Okay, out at 8891. So it's 8801 and 8891. We'll figure what that was in a minute. Actually got filled at ninety one and seven. I got it pretty close to the high. Okay, so 
So far, so good. Just try not to give it back. I was looking at just a little under 89 when it did a big spike there. Looks like we could maybe go to 89 and a half because it looks like the uh, spiders want to come all the way back. What is it? My philosophy is take half out of the middle. Do fine there. Looks like it's, uh, I don't know, it looks like we might be trying to uh, form a little bit of a bottom here, but we'll see. Give it time. While we're at this kind of in inflection point, I am going to step aside and refresh my cup of coffee. Be right back. Looks like Tandem is doing all right. Um, approaching a resistance level on a daily, though. Not a whole lot of dollars and cents in it. Spiders is looking strange. Like I said, I'm, the VXX and the... Um, SPY are going in strange directions, and I think they'll start to settle out and be more logical here in a minute. But right now, way up to now, it's been really weird. GBT. Yeah, GBT. Yeah, I guess good. for the spiders over 237 and a quarter you pro over 30 actually a little long in the tooth on both of them on stochastics rsi so that's not really giving me a a warm fuzzy there
What's for SPSX over 3750? Basically, the high of the day. We could be in for some strange trading this week, the remainder of the week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, there's only three days. Um, there could be a number of people who aren't, um, aren't back from their holidays yet, traders. GBT is still rallying tandem. Eh. GBT. off doing something else and SPSX got over 50. Let's see how, how far SPXS can get. Very far, it looks like.
I guess UVX, uh, the VXX and UVXY were correct. Looking and looking for trades. Hi, Val. Well, the stocks that are showing up on the multi-day highs are the inverse. Right now, the um, there's the three minute spiders. And Val asked the question about the VXX. Let's go look at it. Yeah, on a continuation pattern is something like this. Uh, let's look at a two to make sure that there's nothing untowards about it. No, got two seconds, two minutes. See, it really doesn't show up on a two minute. This shows up on a, on a three. And say a continuation pattern would be something like here, but that's right under the highs from, from Friday's close, so this one right in here. The buy point technically is above these highs. Needs to really close to be totally perfect, but um, so the buy would be somewhere over 49.74 to 5. Uh, yes, it is. Um, assuming it closes here, and I've got my momentum is pointing upwards. So, but you know, we've come back, we've come off from 48.40 to, you know, almost a buck here. How many, how far do we expect it to run without a pullback? Don't know. I mean, we can stay extended a lot more than I could even possibly believe is possible, but you know, the first one was probably a pretty good uh, buy. You would probably have to give it, see from, let's call it uh, 75, you'd probably have to give it to below, at the really uh, beginning here, probably give it to about 30. So you, I'm gonna give about 45 cents. And if I get one to one, 45 cents, what am I looking for? I'm looking for uh, 11 and we made it. We made it on that first uh, pop, that first candle. And then you'd be able to move your stops up. Now the volatility stops uh, are not even to the buy point yet. Because we've done this um, continuation candle, it looks like it's failing. I'd probably have my stop to break even. <laughs> okay, Kirk.
but we have given back a lot of the uh, early gains. So Valley, did that did that work for you? I guess. I mean, you, there are various and sundry things coming into play. You have to take a continuation pattern. Well, let's look and show where the continuation patterns were. We had one right here. We had one right there. And then we had another one right here. Now, this one, unfortunately, it was right under resistance. So I probably wouldn't do that. This one was clear resistance. This one's clear resistance, but how many... Candles were we up? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I counted the down candles, but they weren't really down below the prior lows. So it's part of the move. So kind of a zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. And if I go to say a one minute chart, you could actually see the zigzags. See it up here, come flat, come flat. I don't normally see continuations on twos and three minutes, but I'm sorry, two minutes and one minute, but I usually see them on a three minute chart. Yeah, the, the spiders and um, VXX can get very, very, um, I'll call it squirrely, <clears throat> excuse me, where it bounces all over the place. We're getting a little bit of a rally in this. We did a gap fill basically in the spiders. Can SPSX go all the way back up to 39? I don't know. And at 38.20 first. Doesn't look like it wants to do that right now. The shorts need to watch out if uh, Spider gets over 236. We're, we are in a three minute confirmed downtrend on the Spider zone. On the daily chart, Tandem doesn't look that bad. Not as bad as the others out there or many of the others. Team doesn't look as bad as some. Looks like the golds have given up most of the early gains.
is Mr. SPSX again. Yep, gonna sit on my hands for a little bit here. So I protect those gains that I've got. SPY is coming down here on the 15, on the 5. Uh, looks like it's towards the bottom. Trading, um, sure, Dan. Um, training tutorial. Is that uh, the stuff from last Friday, the uh, impromptu uh, e-learning, or the and the, also the e-learning from November? I can go ahead and post those. All right, let me let me step aside and go get that. Yep, we can do that. We're kind of in no man's land for me, so I'm not gonna. That first one's only about 26 minutes long. Um, let's go see if... I don't think I have the members e-learning uh, posted. That's right. Okay. Um, let me get over there. Okay, why don't I just show you guys how to get to it? I will post it in the direct link. But if you want to uh, go to the login, hit Run Candlesticks, log into your account, go to the member page. All right, and then zoom on down here to the member e learning. What's new? What's new, Pussycat? Whoa, whoa, whoa. And we got the e-learning here. Okay, pretty simple. Once you understand where we're going. Well, the 
the spider on a 15 minute looks like it wants to do a little bit of a hammer let's see if uh, the five minutes uh, pretty much matching wouldn't if we went long on this after it let's say that it completes this five minute candle then your checkpoint would be 235.65 the prior swing and then above that would be targets it's a bit of a counter trend trade it is a 15 minute trend trade uh, and the five minutes maybe or maybe not Depending upon where you see the uh, the trend going, it's these are both flat to down. So okay, we're at ten eighteen, and so this one's only just started. So we've got to give it a wise to finish on the five. I'd probably make it Upro break 29.40 or Spiders break this uh, 235, what, 75 ish. I'm just sitting on my hands for now, looking for the, I'll call it perfect setup or nearly perfect setup. The high probability setup that is. Okay. This week might be a good time to try to do more paper trading, simulated trading. Um, looking at developing watch lists. To, Go back and watch some of your training and stuff and maybe push away from the market and do some family time. The market sure doesn't, uh, isn't, isn't being very helpful. To say the least, it's not being very helpful. Getting a bit of a push up off the bottom on the spiders. Aggressive traders could probably go long here, but that would, <clears throat> excuse me, I'd ask where your reward and where your tar targets and stops would be. Target could be up at 237. This 235, 60 to 75 could be a target as well. A uh, stop would have to be probably 235. Four. It's a dollar, so I probably want a dollar or more of, of uh, one to one or two to one. Hello, Edis. I should say good evening. <laughs> oh boy. We'll 
be coming up on the London close in a little bit, about 11. We're coming up on the bottom of the hour. The, uh, we traditionally have a rally or sell off between 10.30 and 11. You're probably used to hearing that now. Never hurts to repeat. Let's look at KSS. It's got some stuff showing up on the multi-day uh, list here. Um, some of the reports had uh, sales and retailers doing quite well. But it's being overwhelmed by other macro news. The investors and traders are ignoring that for the moment. They're all focusing on the negative headlines. Let's put the cues back up over here on the left. Oh, thank you, Al. I appreciate it. Oh, right, Alice. I um, I forgot. Today's Boxing Day. I don't think London is open. You're right. My bad. I just went into my normal routine. I start thinking at the bottom of the hour we're approaching the London close, and in fact we're not. Yes. Um, my best time, I've, I've done a journal. Um, I did a journal religiously for the first nine months that I was day trading. And then I've gone and done bits and pieces of journaling since then where I run into um, I, I'm, I'm a bit remiss in, in not marking up every trade, but you got to do it at least for the first six, nine to 12 months. And I found out that I would, <laughs> okay. Um, I found out that I did fairly well in the morning, um, more than just fairly well. And I would tend to give it back in the afternoon. And Fridays were not a very good day for me. Well, from that, um, I started to adjust my trading, and I would tend to only trade from the open around 9.30 to about 11, 11.30. I mean, I'd be done with any new entries by 10.45 or 11 o'clock, and then I'm out uh, pretty much at the lunch hour. And then... I did another analysis uh, about days of the week um, just, I guess, about three months ago, four months ago. And I found out that my worst day of the week had become my best day of the week. <laughs> Friday had become the best because I only took the best of the best setups. So why don't I do that for every day? The, there's the fear of missing out, or there's also the um, idea of, well, heck, I'm here, I've got to trade something. Well, maybe you don't. I mean, I don't have, I have the luxury that I do not have to trade to make money at this. This is more of an avocation than a hobby that pays money. Um, I like the extra money, but you know, I don't have to have it, so I can sit I don't have the pressure. The people who are trying to day trade for a living, I I feel sorry for them because it's it's pretty tough for you to be able to do that. So I don't know. Um, I guess the point was 
do journaling, find out what works for you and what doesn't work. All right. Well, that was Wednesday. That's supposed to be changed to Friday. Come on. Oh, it says Wednesday and Friday now. Yeah, we've got the Friday um, oil report. I usually have a reminder on Wednesdays, and I changed it, but I didn't change it totally properly. I added Friday, but did not take away Wednesday. Looking for my favorite uh, intraday J hook patterns. Look at five minute uh, patterns. We have. LABU's trying to work as a five-minute J-hook. Um, the entry would have been down at 2, 260, uh, 2675. Uh, not really working. WRD. Whoa. IMMU is doing well today. Twilio, Immunogen, Pluralsight PS has done some uh, stair stepping higher. TDR, a little light on the volume. OKTA OK, did a five minute intraday J hook, but it's probably going to run out of steam. I, I think the mark, uh, what do you see for these right to your settings on the chart? Oh, um, So what I've got here is an average true range daily 14. Now, if you're talking, are you talking about the ATR for the um, the trailing stop, the ATR stop, or are you looking for just an average true range? Oh, okay. Well, for the volatility stop, for five minutes or higher, I use a true range of 10 and a multiplier one and a half. That was developed by one of our colleagues here, Doug Campbell. And he did quite an extensive uh, test to find stuff that works well. That'll work on anywhere from a five, maybe 15 minute up all the way to the daily or weekly. It's When you get to the dailies or weeklies, they do tend to get a little bit further out. Um, probably sometimes more than I could stand in actual uh, dollars and cents. Now, do you, do you have TC2000? Do you have Thinkorswim, McKaylee? Um, what, do you, um, what do you have here? Good morning, Bob. Because I, uh, you have think or swim. Well, let me post out that that uh, indicator for think or swim, and you can then import it. Ah. 
Ah, well, TC2000 has the V-stop already in it, and uh, after Doug did the analysis of that, we had one of our um, one of our longtime members, Steve Combs, along with a few others, uh, re-engineered it and uh, reverse engineered it, I guess, uh, into Think or Swim. And for those of us who had both TOS and TC2000, we verified it. And I just posted the uh, PDF of that. We've got, a, we've got an absolutely fantastic group of people. Not only are they good traders, but they're good folks as well. What do I use for a one minute chart? I don't use a one minute chart, Kaylee. Um, I used, I, I, I tend to see that the ones in two minutes have too much um, uh, noise in it in a three minute, yeah. Um, all right, here, let me show you what I've got here for, well, um, let's see. Let's go to a one day three, and I do studies, edit studies, and I use a 10 1.5 but what I find is sometimes, sometimes they're, depending upon what it is, they, they don't work that well. I mean, and they work really well on the ETFs, um, but let's, let's take something like Okada, or I'll move it to a, Okta. See how it's kind of flip, flip flopping around here? Um, that's maybe not a good one. Um, which one's actually working today? You. Okay, let's try it out. Here's USAT. Let me go to a five minute and show you. Whoops, I meant to one day five. Now you see how these work on a five minute, but when I start to go down to a three minute chart, it works and doesn't work, if you know what I mean. The problem is, is just what does the stock, how does the stock behave on lower time frames? I found that a lot of the stocks like that, that trade under a million, that the 10 1.5 might be on a three minute might be a little bit tight because they are a little more I'll say unpredictable uh, let's look at nugget try to find something that um, kind of proves out what I'm, I mean this is in a chop so ignore that All right, now, now Tandem. Tandem was in uh, an uptrend, really. Let's take the one day five. And you see how it works on a five, but it doesn't work so well on a three minute? I have found that a lot of the volatility stop is gonna depend on um, the instrument you're trading based upon the time frame, that three minute gets a bit, that's why I said five minute or above, it does tend to work on all stocks and, and the volumes that are, that I'm used to looking at, 500,000 or above. But when you get down to a three minute, the ETFs and the major indices work and the major stocks work, but some of the, I'll call them the mid majors, like tandem and whatever don't tend to work. See, this volatility stop works fine. On a, uh, that's a five minute, let's go to a three. I think it'll still be fine. Yeah, 
there's a three minute on UTX. UTX is a big, big trader and tends to follow the indices. The S all the S and P 500 stocks would tend to uh, follow them. Um, Apple seems to work here. Um, Oracle, you know. So really, it is you know what what's the volume of trading? What's the volatility? And what time frame are you on? Five minute above, it doesn't probably matter. From uh, below five, then it might matter. And you know what I use them for anyway? As a nominated stop uh, level. And I go look and see where we are um, on, on price. So let's look at USAP. That's right. All right, so if I were trading a three-minute chart on this one, it's a bit, a bit flaky, you know, it's only 785,000, I'd probably be on a five-minute, but I would look at some of these and say, okay, I'd look back to the left and see what I have as price levels. And I, and I use price levels more than, uh, not using a uh, parabolic SAR, no, no. Mr. Lobster. Um, let's see, I think, let's, let's go over here. Okay. I'm going to say it's proprietary to TC2000, their volatility stop. It's the way they put it together. I don't think that there's anything magic about it, but what it uses is a true range period and a multiplier. So you pick out the, the, the period and the multiplier, 10 and one and a half, and it is not a parabolic SAR. Because they have a parabolic SAR. Let's put that up here. give me a chance to edit it, huh? See the parabolic star is all the way down here and there. I don't, I don't know what they use for the parabolic star. Uh, there's no parameters for me to adjust it, it looks like. But they're entirely different, especially when you get any real volatility in there. Okay, now I've got to take it off. <laughs> Lobster, we had looked at the possibility of using a parabolic SAR, but found that it it didn't seem to work. It tended to have it too far away. It's for, I think it's kind of like stochastics. It's for long-term investors rather than traders. Yes, that's correct. Why? Because it works. <laughs> um, See, if I show you the stochastics here, all right, that's on a five minute. Let's go to a daily. Whoops. We'll go back to the five. Let's take that out. Let's go.
my Stochastics RSI with my settings, and I've tweaked them down. Now this is a Stochastics 12. Um, a 14 or so is... Um, What is it? 14.2 or something like that? I'm trying to remember what the uh, what a, a default would be. It kind of works, but the, it but then it doesn't. Let's just look at um, uh, what's a good stock. I just found it works better on all time frames, and I'm just I'm having trouble finding a good resemblance of a stock on the daily. See how the stochastics over here doesn't really move; it just kind of sits there. Whereas my stochastics RSI is actually rotating. When I get to the tops, it's what I'm sorry. When I get a crossover from the top, it's very reliable. When I get a cross up, up from the bottom, it's fairly reliable. Um, stochastics, you know, told me that this one would be potentially at the bottom going up, and it was my stochastics RSI. Actually identified it early, but candles would not have allowed me to get in any earlier. And you have to remember, Philippe, how I use my stochastics RSI. I do not use them as anything other than a secondary or tertiary indicator to give me confirmation about how we're doing. I'm going to use candles first and primary. Price. Price first, indicator second. How do I use my 3, 8, and 17 exponential moving averages as a way of visualizing the trend? But price is king. Price is everything. The candlesticks help me evaluate price. Stochastics RSI helps me judge momentum. Could stochastics do the same? I, I have not found it. It didn't work reliably for me, especially in intraday uh, settings. It just my my preference, I guess. Sure. Well, MACD is even worse, in my opinion. But again. I've not been able to make it work for me, like balance of power that I have here in in, in overlap with stochastics RSI. I had I tried to trade using uh, MACD and balance of power, but I've then found that I just wasn't able to be successful with it, so I threw it away. Then I ran across uh, Doug Campbell, and Doug Campbell came up with. An explanation of balance of power that I could understand using as a secondary or tertiary indicator, confirming indicator of what we're seeing in price. So I've put it on my chart and I have it out there, but I don't pay a lot of attention to it unless I'm interested in going long or short. So, and I do, I tend not to use it more on the daily charts instead of anything else. Right in here, it's a, this is a proprietary indicator. And it says that institutions are were interested in buying Beacon. And then they just kind of fell off. Once it, uh, once it hit this last price level, it the interest in them buying it has waned quite a bit. Well, since then, I haven't gotten anything that resembles a bicycle. 
we got buy signals back over here. Volume and BOP both confirmed it as we broke out here above 28.65. Now, it had earnings on the day of this actual big move. Well, it's kind of hard to judge it because it's going to be primarily volume. And this balance of power tends to confirm it as well. But price is going to go. If there's, if there's more buyers than sellers, or more sellers than buyers, it's going to show up in price. Um, I really don't. I really don't care if the institutions are stocking up on a particular symbol, you know, putting in their account. Because a lot of times if you get these lows, the, the people who look long-term, like Berkshire Hathaway or something, they, they might be adding, adding shares to stuff they like. But their time horizon might be 10 or 20 years. Well, I'm not looking at a 10 to 20 year time horizon. So I'm looking at maybe five minutes, maybe five days, but not much beyond that. For most things. I mean, I do have some longer term holdings. But it's kind of tough. Uh, if, if the institutions are buying or selling uh, and they're looking at 10 or 20, if it's got a good short term uh, prognosis, then I'll probably be in there with them. I guess it's price. I want to welcome everybody who was here for the first time, or even not, but those who are our guests, welcome. And those who are here for the first time, I'm going to give you a couple of uh, links to look at. Bob S. asked, what about relative strength sectors that are, are we more le leading? Um, right now, 100% of everything is down. I will look through my sectors. I, I have <clears throat> the major, I'll call them 14, so a lot of people say 11 industry sectors. I'll have them listed here and I'll run through them, but all of them, all of them are in major downtrends. So I can't see anything here that would tell me that's a leading sector to the upside. Now, will there be any leadings to the downside? Well, these things are so far extended to the downside, I would be hard-pressed to go short this late in the game, even with your money. So I use these 11, or sorry, 14, but I also have an extended 45 that kind of subdivides them. And I'll be happy to post those groups out there uh, today for you, if you would like. And they basically add in things like the ETFs. Right. But I'll, I'll look through those on a normal basis and look at the percentage of change and the best will float to the top. And we knew that LABU was doing better today, but it did most of it on the gap up. We didn't get a follow through. And we didn't get more than a two day high. All right, so great questions. Thank you very much. I appreciate you posting the questions out there. I love answering questions. Um, let's do a couple of things while we've got people here, and then I'll come back to posting those for you and everyone, Bob. Okay.
I'm not sure if everybody knows about it, but we have a 30-day trial in all of our rooms. You can do it, uh, look at them via this link. Only $14 for 30 days. A bargain, uh, in it, less than 50 cents a day. So I think this is a, a great way to get to know us. Um, maybe you go sign up after uh, the new year and stick around for January and watch what's going on uh, with us. Let's, um, let me see here. I'm going to go ahead and post out a link to the performance that we've had since 1 May here in this room. And I'm pretty proud of it. We've uh, averaged over $2,000 a month, even in uh, the worst months that are going out there. Uh, Hit Run Candlesticks is a the main um, the main trading room that was established by Rick Sadler some 15 years ago, and Rightway Options started a couple three years ago, and I started the Top Gun trading on the first of May, and, and each of us have different focus. Rick will focus primarily on stock trading swing uh, swings from you know three to five ten days. Right way options obviously focusing on option trades uh, longer term not not intraday and then Top Gun trading is focusing on primarily day trading or very very short term swings say one to three days and we'll use options, futures, or stocks slash ETFs. Anything. Look out below. <laughs> um, well, I started TJ with a uh, futures room back in May. And after the first six months, we did a, an evaluation. And it looked like most of the people that were coming in were more interested in trading um, Trading ETFs, not futures, uh, ETFs slash uh, individual stocks. And I I'm, I think I'm pretty good at trading earnings, period. Individual stocks after earnings releases and evaluating the gap ups and the gap downs there. So that's what I've done and based upon what the what the user community that we have been coming in contact with and they've come back and coming to visit us, that's what they wanted. So I could do either one and I'm trading my money, real money in my individual retirement accounts, which is one of the reasons why I tend to only look for long positions unless I'm doing the ETFs or uh, some options to the short side or long side with with high, high, uh, high price stocks. Did that answer your question a bit, TJ? I know you asked me what time it was and I basically told you how to build a watch. I apologize. Good. All right, let me see if I can get these um, sectors. Uh, Hit Run Candlesticks is Rick Sadler. Uh, I used to be in there as a part-time moderator uh, before I broke out into my own separate room. Oh yeah. In fact, I will even do futures here uh, at times. when I, I trade whatever can, is moving and will make money. I did do tend to focus on the markets and individual securities that are in good setups. There are zero individual setups that look good to me at the moment. We have no earnings this week, so there's nothing there that's going to help me. 
with individual stocks. So right now, that's why you're seeing me only looking at uh, the major market ETFs. I tend to kind of, the hobby I mentioned is trading. <laughs> uh, another hobby that I have that I'm not very good at is golf. I've, uh, unfortunately, a couple years ago, um, a couple years ago I lost uh, a good friend who was a, a trading friend and a golfing buddy here in Florida. Goofy golfer, some of you may have run across him. I, I miss him dearly. Anyway, sorry. I mean, uh, looks like the VIX is uh, heading north. <laughs> well, that's that's probably uh, that's probably a true statement there, Anise. All right, let's see if we can get this over here. Copy all symbols, the clipboard. Getting, I'm working on that. Um, trust, I don't use any margin at all. And I, I attempt to risk a more than one to $200 per trade. Let me show you what we did this morning. Uh, give me two seconds. Let me get this um, expanded sector. I appreciate you guys coming in. I know you got a lot of different things you could do, be doing today. And uh, I love, love, love having the questions. Trading. Okay, there's my expanded sector ETFs. Um, let's go back up here. Trust wanted to know what the average margin and the risk. Um, well, let's look at what we did this morning. The best one was probably UVXY, that example. Let me bring that one up. I'm going to bring up my Ninja Trader chart. It does, a, I think, a better job of showing um, showing the entry and everything. Um, what we did is I identified the, about the 87.50. I said it was a bit long because I was focusing in on a three-minute. I had a three-minute today, and I... I looked at it and said, oh boy. All right. Um, we went long here at about 87, what was that? 87.73. Let me mark that up.
basically a breakout over the high of the day. All right, and then this breakout over the high of the day, let's go ahead and edit that. Got to get a little wider. Green. Let's do a four. All right, so that's kind of where I went long. No, it's exactly where I went long. And what I was using was a stop here basically below 50, so about 47. And so what I do on my risk calculation, am I do it on dollars? Uh, let me uh, see if I can find it here. Okay, share sizing. All right, I have developed a quick and dirty lookup table that basically goes on, now that's on a 50. Let me see if I can find it on Try it for 100. Nope. Uh, I'm having trouble finding it. I've got it. I've got stuff uh, everywhere. Sorry about the uh, noise in the background. I've got uh, four doggies here. Mine plus uh, my son's. Okay. What I did is I've uh, got a... Something's at the door. Well, it could be leaves just going down the, uh, down the road, you know. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Um, this is the number of cents between your entry and your stop. So that's how much you're risking. What I was risking on that um, was, I'm going to call it 75 to 45. That's approximately 30 cents. So 30 cents, again, this is risking $100 per trade, says I could go up to say three to 330 shares. So I can do them round numbers. So what I do is I go down this column, then I go over this line to this level and I go up and it tells me the maximum number of shares that I can trade to risk only $100. But if I wanted to risk 200, I just double that. And that would be a maximum of 600. As it was, I had 30, I bought 400, I was risking $120 on the trade. And that's where I normally, uh, I'm doing the sweet spot here. My goal is not to risk a lot, 
is to show everybody that you do not have to be a stupid trader and trade stupid sizes and take a lot of risk to earn a decent amount of money. So with me risking between one and 200 per trade, if you wanted to make more doing what I'm doing, you have to add more shares. You add more shares, that adds more risk. But if you want to risk 400, you'd get about double what I'm getting a month. So that's what you would have to do. So that's the, the risk side of that. Now let me uh, do a file, save as, and let's take that over to this window. And I'll be able to find it next time because I moved it over to my main folder. All right. Now we'll get back to uh, that spider's working. But what isn't working, and that's your right. Is what happens here is when I zoom in, it basically freezes, Chris. Oh, you're welcome. Today's the. Per in fact, this week is probably going to be the perfect week to ask questions because we're going to have time to do in-depth analysis. So I have. I'm taking two trades today. One in U Pro. Too late on the entry. <clears throat> excuse me, and um, I lost 40 bucks because I, I, I bailed out early. I realized that um, I was not trading really smart. And on the second one, I got 292, so I'm up over two and a half today. I've kind of met my vacation levels. 300 or so would be a, a goal. But, um, yeah, I mean... The whole idea is to, is to trade and take the right setups. Now, TJ Pacman asks, how does the SPY relate to the ES? Does one lead the other? Um, I believe, and it's, I have only, um, I have no real, nothing other than an empirical study. I believe that the, the futures lead but I can't prove it. So these are 15 minutes. Let's take them to three minute charts. Today three. Now I'm gonna to go to day three and have to zoom in. And they look very, very similar to one another. But does one lead the other? I can't, I can't tell you that I know for sure. They, they're pretty much in lockstep. Now, for me, there, there's arbitrage that would go on if one gets out of sync. Somebody would buy or sell the uh, S&P futures and buy and sell the spiders. And it probably goes on all the time. I'm not going to be looking for one or two pennies. Now, I believe that the futures will tend to give us the idea of where we're going to open, where the general direction is. Um, let us see that. I go to the, whoops, what did I just do? Let's go over to the charts daily. And this is where the futures are. And then remember what that chart looks like. And there's the spiders. The only difference that I see is that we had a green candle on the, on the, that's the um, E-minis. And we have a slightly red, higher open than we are sitting at the moment. 
and this and the S and P futures had a lower open than we're trading at the moment. But that's because the the spiders are only measured from nine thirty. I tend to try to trade between swing levels, which is why I like my Ninja Trader chart. As we go back to the spiders, we go to the spider five. And I have swing levels here in the green dots and the purple dots or magenta dots and the dash lines. It gets awfully busy here, but basically we're, we have minor and major swing levels. Major swing levels are around 234 and 238, roughly. And the minor ones are Still 234, but the minor swing levels here are about 235.75. And where the volatility stops are, are pretty much where a lot of the swing levels are. Now, where, is that swing level all the way up here to 237.75? It may be as low as 235.66. Those are close enough, really. You have to judge where we're going to be going. On this five minute chart, we opened up, we went up for a whole 10 minutes and then basically went back down to the pre uh, to Friday lows and retested them, bounced, went down and flipped a little bit to the lower side, get people short and then rally against them. The market's job is take the most amount of money from the most number of people in the least amount of time. Its job is to steal your money. And the way it's going to do, it's going to do false breakouts and false breakdowns. That's one way to do it. And to get into CHOP. So we do not want to be in CHOP. Right here, we're getting a rally. We could potentially rally up here maybe to 237. That could be a good trade. So, as you pro, uh, let's go to a three minute now. And you see we are breaking out above these levels. And now we're going to go somewhere towards this 2980 to 2990 level. We're just punching into the lowest part of the five minute opening range. The long could be as, as early as 29.30 or as late as 29.40. Let's see how it goes. We the, the price goes basically from swing level to swing level. That's where the support and resistance are. That's where entries, targets, and stops should be placed. Now, do I cheat a little bit on the on the stops? If I were long here, twenty nine twenty five or so, could I have it down here to twenty eight ninety? So may have a thirty five cent stop instead of all the way down below. Sure. Could I even have it uh, once I get going like this? I could creep up to probably twenty nine twelve to twenty nine twenty. Do I then go down to a two minute chart? Sometimes, if that helps me visualize what's going on, especially if it's going in the direction, it may allow me to see what's going on into a candle and maybe raise the stop or pick out a better target. Why don't we watch this to see what it does?
and this big wide range bar candle was basically a function of people who were short down here covering and people who were looking at this swing level around 29 and a quarter see it as a possible long intraday trade wide range bar if we close here as a doji on this candle here we could get a one two three continuation move to the upside i'll see what we've got we have to let it we have to let it finish but what i'd like to see here is this candle be something like that and then get a continuation to the upside we'll see but we need to let this close yes it is doug remember what i said they got to try to take the most amount of money from the most number of people these people who were silly enough to go short notice my momentum was actually rising as people were going short that did not bode well for the shorts and that's basically an r squeeze a bull bollinger band squeeze notice how this candle that was very very red is now up near the highs This momentum is actually pointing upwards. The Bollinger Band. Now, I don't have the Bollinger Bands up there. I don't want to use them. But I use, let this momentum indicator help me. I would love to have Stochastics RSI on NinjaTrader. It does not work on NinjaTrader 8. The guy who uh, wrote it uh, said, oh, well, NinjaTrader has their own Stochastics RSI. I don't need to write it. I went, <laughs> but it's not the same. It's not good. It doesn't work. Correctly, anyway. So I had to come up with alternatives to judge momentum. We're approaching 11.20. I need to take a couple of minutes break, and then I will be right back. Sweetie bud, what you doing? Wow. Hi, baby girls. Okay, now let's sit down. Lay down. Right. Three, ten minutes. Five minutes. Okay, we tro we closed with a doji. We get over 2960, we'll get the rally. Only problem we have is we have overhead resistance. All right, Doug, you said we had a rally from the lows. Remember I said we normally get a 10.30 to 11 o'clock rally? Sometimes they occur a little bit later. In this case, we got our rally starting around 11. Not looking good for the uh, bulls here. The momentums are still pointing upwards, and this candle hasn't closed and the stop on that 
three minute trade is definitely well below this candle. Now, this is not a perfect setup for me. So therefore, I'm not taking the trade, even though it could work. And that's because of what we have over here to the left. Looks like it's doing a bull flag to me. It looks like this level of 2940 is holding. Every time we get there, the bulls step up so far. If the 2940 fails, it'll probably pull back uh, and run out of steam. Now, we it's, it's go or no-go time, probably, with the momentum. It needs to use this momentum to go higher. And there we go. We're over 56. Let's see if we can get over 60. Kaboom. Needs to hold it. Twenty nine eighty is going to be a little difficult, but it might make it. All right. If anybody has any other questions, you go ahead and, and post them out. I am going to be able to be here for another few minutes. Then I have to take a lunch break, and I have a doctor's appointment at two. To apologize but I I'm not sure what we're going to be able to be doing this afternoon I know that I don't want to trade I think I'm done for the day I don't initiate trades after about 11 give or take a few minutes and um, I tend to try to be done by 1130 during the lunch hour for many many traders I'm seeing over here on my other chart for the Stochastics RSI for the UPRO here that we were looking at. It's up at the top. Doesn't mean it hasn't really rolled over yet until it goes below the 80, but it's looking a little long in the tooth. And I watch both of them.
if I had the spiders on, it would be the same, basically. See, there's a spy. Will we try to go back up and retest the high of the day? It's possible. Quite possible. And that will you pro, well, there's the push. There's the old zigzag going with the uh, U-Pro. Move up, pull back, and up. Now we're starting to run into resistance over here, so. We would have to then Watch for a cell signal on the candles. Now, did I, uh, I guess I didn't uh, post out the uh, share sizing. Let's see if I can do that. All right, I posted three of them. Two of them are in Excel files with a $200 risk and a $100 day trading risk. Share sizing 100 in a PDF form. If you want to print it out and put it on, on a wall above your uh, screens, I do. I've got most of them kind of memorized. How do I derive the swing levels? Well, partly, if I've got Ninja Trader, they've already done them. I, I've got um, I've got indicators that pro, uh, to draw them for me. Otherwise, I have to do it the old manual way. And. What I do is I try to look at swing levels where, let's take the spiders, and let's look at, all right, zoom in. What I would do is I would look at, change the, Change this marker to a line. Color red. Okay. So obviously beforehand, this was a swing level. There's a swing level. Basically, it's the highs there. This is the lows there. We dip down to the low here. Um, you have a swing high here. You may have a minor one here and a minor one there, but that's based upon what the candles look like. So those are the five minute swing levels. And then you evaluate what it does when it's there. Now let's look at it on a three minute. Zoom in. And we made a high up here. We made kind of an intermediate low there, call it a minor swing. Another minor swing here. A major swing here and a major swing there. Minor. 
minor. And again, what we're looking at here is these are lower lows and high and lower lower highs and lower lows. There's an equal high, a slightly higher low, but then we gave up, gave indications we were going to go back down, and we did. Equal high, but then broke out. That could be a minor, and we came up to this minor level here. You could have consider that a possible minor area swing, but I tried to pick out the majors. And it's all subjective, very, very subjective, except except where I've programmed it in here for the major and minors, and it's mechanical. Uh, Ninja will draw them automatically because I have an indicator that, that I either found or purchased. Let me see what one it is. Yeah, I purchased it. It's not, um, it's not readily available. You've got to buy it. I got it from a program called Bloodhound. Seven or eight hundred dollars. It's got three or four or five um, proprietary type indicators. Love the swing indicators on it, though. Then I don't have to. It jumps out at me. I'll have this one on in the background, where I have spider charts or whatever charts I've got. I look at multiple views of the same. It helps me out. And the other thing helps is a volume profile, potentially, where you get the highest volume. You'll go to high volume swings. But they tend to work better um, on hourly and daily charts. Um, let's see. Let me put this back up. Oops. If I let go, I'd have to stop moving for a bit. Let's go to the daily chart. And why is my volume profile not there? Huh. That's not what I want. Got too many three month dailies. up. Okay, that's the one I need to get rid of. Get this out of the way and I'll, I'll find it in a minute. And that's why I just go ahead and add the volume profile to my existing.
No, TJ, I don't do options on futures. I have not had any experience with that. Okay, I'm having trouble getting into lower time frames at the moment. Let's look at UPRO. See how it's approaching 30? We got to 29. Uh, yeah, if you're interested in options, right way options is by far is the best way to go and they do swing options and doug is probably one of the best if not the best options trader that i've ever run across in my 20 some odd years of trading and you could use the same link to sign up let's see let me find it That'll give you the idea of the option to go into hit run candlesticks, right way options, or top gun trading. All three. All right, folks, I am going to take a lunch break, and then I have no idea when I'll be back. I might, st I'll probably stop in a little bit before leaving for my uh, appointment, and then I will probably be back before the close, maybe. No guarantees. All right. Tomorrow morning, if you guys want, uh, I start at 9.15 a.m. I do an overview of the market, and then we start trading at uh, 9.30 and go for an hour and a half to two hours uh, solid. Tomorrow will probably be a little more active day, I would believe, with more traders back. All right. You guys take care. Thank you very much for joining me today, and it was a pleasure uh, being able to answer your questions. Ta-ta.